Hey everybody, Mike here. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to pour a very large concrete slab for a garage that also has a lean-to off the side of it. Now we were hired on this job to come in and, and put up the forms. We we're going to lay some plastic, put the wire mesh down, and then pour and finish the concrete slab. So I'm going to show you how we do all that. If you're new to my channel, my channel is all about concrete. So if you like that kind of stuff, please go down there and hit the subscribe. And if you like these kind of videos, please smash the like button too. So what I'm doing today is, is me and my daughter Tia are here, and we're going to get these forms up. That's the homeowner there too with us. He's going to help us out a little bit. Now, this is going to be a 6-inch thick slab with the edges thickened to about 12 inches. It's a 60 by 50 slab, but only 60 by 40 of it is going to be the garage. And then this part here closest to you in the video the last 10 feet of this by the whole width of the garage is going to be like a lean-to area that he is going to have a roof over so we're gonna we're gonna pour the slab we're gonna pour the concrete all at the same time and then where it's thickened there right in the middle we're gonna slope that area out towards the outside of the garage for his lean-to I think he's just gonna put a he's got a big uh, camper he hauls behind his truck so I think he's just gonna back his camper in there on that part now these forms, the 2x12s, these things, these things are heavy. They go together, you know, pretty hard. What what the area was like before we started was a, it was kind of an, a grassy area like you see right here in the front. So the homeowner hires an excavator to come in and he digs out, you know, two to three feet of that grassy stuff. And then he fills it back in with gravel. And where we live in Maine, we do get a lot of freezing and thawing. We have about three months where it's really, really cold. So you got to put that good gravel in there. So any water that gets into the gravel will, you know, permeate down through it and either get it soaked into the ground or go into a drainage pipe and get, <clears throat> you know, drain out away from the slab. That's how we can do these slabs without going down below the frost line and they don't heave. The key is putting really good permeable gravel underneath them and then compacting them so they don't settle. I don't usually get involved with that part. You know, I, I do have excavators I work with, but in a lot of cases, just like this one, the homeowner hires the excavator. He does his part, and then I come in and I do my slab part. And then the excavator will come back after the slab's done, you know, and he'll do all the backfilling and and regrading so and, and looming if he has to so it works out pretty good we're so busy doing concrete in the summers you know for usually usually from april to the first of december that you know we just we do concrete every day so even i wouldn't even have time to come in and do gravel like this it would just take away from us pouring concrete every day it's a you know in maine there's all kinds of excavators that do this stuff so we're kind of lucky so we got the forms all all uh, screwed together, squared, pinned in place, and set to grade using the laser. And then now what we're doing is we're laying down a 6 mil poly vapor barrier to help keep moisture from coming up through the slab. And then we're going to put down the wire mesh. So we got, these are called slab bolsters. They're two and a half inch slab bolsters. We'll lay them all down and then we'll put the wire on top of them. And that's going to help keep the wire from just sinking down to the bottom. We try to use these whenever we can get them. A lot of times the place that sells the wire mesh will be sold out of them. So, you know, we're left just putting the wire right on the ground and pulling it up into the concrete. Now I'm laying two inch styrofoam on this piece that's going to be outside the garage. Remember, this is going to be the lean-to part. It's going to be 10 feet deep by the length of the garage. And when we pour the slab, we're going to slope this area out away from the garage a little bit. The homeowner wanted the styrofoam under it because the star because this is going to be exposed to the outside and the styrofoam is just going to help keep the frost from getting down below this and getting under it and moving it the slab itself is going to take quite a bit of concrete i think we figured between you know 60 and 70 yards for this so we're gonna we're gonna get this prepped today and then we'll, we'll kind of come back tomorrow and get it poured we're also putting a double row of rebar around the outside edges. And on this one, we're gonna just, uh, we'll just, we'll just wet set them as we pour. So as we get concrete in that 
in that uh, beam area, the thickened area, we'll set the rebar down in it and push it down so it's only about three inches from the top. So here we are early the next morning. It's like 6.30 in the morning. Sun's just coming up. It was, it's a really, really nice day for pouring concrete. And we're going to get this first truck dumped right out. we got multiple trucks coming right back to back to back. So we want to make sure that what we like doing is, is just getting them, that truck dumped right out, getting it spread out, and then we can get the next one backed in, get it mixed up while we're screeding this one. we got a pretty good crew here today. i got a couple of extra people helping me. As you notice, one is uh, both temporary workers, but just out here helping us today. One is, uh, his name's Jeff, and the other, the girl's name's Sydney. And Sydney just worked for me for about a week or two. And then Jeff worked with me for, I don't know, about six, six or seven weeks this summer. You can see Sydney there on the right. T is on the left. T is my daughter. She works with me a lot in the summers when she's not in college. Now Luke's getting that thing screeded. We're using the Screed Demon Viber Screed on this today. So this the screeding part of this is going to actually be pretty easy using that versus doing it by hand. And the access, you know, we had pretty good access around this thing. But when some, when, when you get a slab, oh, what we're doing right now is we had part of the form bow out a little bit. There's a lot of pressure on these forms. That's why we put kickers like every three or four feet. But this this one let go, so we're trying to get another kicker on it. And what we do is we use a, a pinch bar, drive it down into the ground so we can get some leverage, and then we'll put as many kickers in as we need to get the form back to straight. We got a string on top of the form that tells us if it if it moves in or out or not. So you see, we're dumping this second truck. We got the third truck right there, just waiting, mixing up, and get that second truck dumped out. Then we get the third one backed around. So we just kind of do it in in sections. You know, we'll try to dump 10 yards out where we can get part of it screeded. Then move over, get the other part, because we're we're not only thinking about how we're going to pour this, but we're thinking about how we're going to finish it too with the power trials. So we, we just don't want to be random with how we pour the trucks. We want to have a, like a system of the first truck goes here, second truck here next to it, third truck is back over here. So when we when we power trial it, it just makes the power trial a little bit easier than trying to jump around on different loads in case they don't all set up at the same time. Up and back there, you can see where the excavator is up in front of my white truck. We're actually going to put a slab for his house up in there. So his uh, garage slab is going to be bigger than his house slab. <laughs> I think that's a lot of man's dreams right there, isn't it? Now we're pouring, we're pouring a 4,000 PSI mix for this slab. Usually we'll pour a 3,500 pound mix for garages. We also got fiber mesh in it. So it's got wire mesh, it's got fire mesh. Uh, fiber mesh. It's got it's a 4,000 psi mix. It's got water reducer in it, so we don't have to use much water to mix, and we can still pour it pretty loose. So this is this is going to be a really really strong slab when we get done with it. Our goal is, you know, when we pour big slabs like this, we want to start early, early in the morning, as early as we possibly can get concrete and then get it dumped out as fast as we can before the sun gets up and it gets too hot. That way we have, you know, if we have a little bit of time in between pouring and finishing so we don't have to hustle right back and get on it with a power trial. That's typically the case. And then when you get the first loads of concrete out of the concrete plant in the morning, typically they're not that hot. You know, you don't have to worry about leftover concrete being on the truck or anything like that. And it all usually sets pretty consistently on us so we don't have one load that sets a lot faster than the others. Typically we'll strike our wet pads by hand like this and then we'll use the vibrating screed off of these wet pads like, like Luke's doing right now. We just we like to do that just to make sure that everything's as flat as it can possibly be. We'll get these floors within about an eighth of an inch as far as flatness. 
in most cases, you know, if you come back and you check this with a laser, in every 10 feet, it should be within an eighth of an inch. That's what we shoot for. And typically that's what we get when we check them. Now, what Danner and I are doing with the screed now is we're screeding that part that slopes away towards the excavator about an inch from the garage part. So that's why we're screeding that last 10 foot piece by hand. If we do it with the vibrating screed, it could sag a little bit. We don't want it to sag, so doing it by hand, you don't get any sag usually. But all in all, I mean, when we pour large slabs like this, you know, we we like to get them in fast. We like to have a big crew if we can. Uh, I'll leave, like, we'll leave Darren and Luke here today to power trial this. We won't all have to stay to finish this. And then the rest of us will go set up some jobs for another day or if we have a small pour somewhere we could go pour something small but I mean Darren and Luke and when it comes to power trial and they can power trial just about anything any size uh, rarely do I have to stay and finish with them and that's gonna do it for this so make sure you watch the video here that's popping up if you're interested in watching some other concrete slabs guys um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed and if you like this video please smash the like button we'll see you on the next one